There is room for all in the shadow of God's wing. There is room for all sheltered in God's love. And I rejoice in saying, my refuge and my rock in whom I trust, there is room for all. Whether you gather for worship with Redeemer Lutheran Church this morning as a believer, a seeker, a doubter, a combination of any of those, know that you are welcome. Know that there is room for you because there is room for all. Welcome to worship. <laughs>
God continued, but you may not see my face. No one can see me and live. God said, look, here is a place right beside me. Put yourself on this rock. When my glory passes by, I'll put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I pass by. Then I'll take my hand away and you'll see my back. But you won't see my face. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. The Pharisees plotted a way to trap Jesus into saying something damaging. They sent their disciples with a few of Herod's followers mixed in to ask, Teacher, we know you have integrity. Teach the way of God accurately, are indifferent to popular opinion, and don't pander to your students. So, Tell us honestly, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Jesus knew they were up to no good. He said, why are you playing these games with me? Why are you trying to trap me? Do you have a coin? Let me see it. They handed him a silver piece. This engraved, who does it look like and whose name is on it? They said, Caesar. Then give Caesar what is Caesar's. And give God what is God's. The Pharisees were speechless. They went off shaking their heads. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. First, what Jesus is not saying. This is not a story about whether or not Christians should pay their taxes. This story has nothing to do with taxes. Taxes are only mentioned because in the year 30, like now, taxes are a topic that fuels a lot of passion and a lot of unhappiness and anger. The Pharisees wanted to trap Jesus for a very simple reason. It is Passover, so more Jews are in Jerusalem than at any other time of the year. They are in the temple where many Jews would be gathering. And the Pharisees want to stop 
Jesus' public ministry once and for all. And so they know if we ask Jesus a question about taxes, no good for him can come. If he says, absolutely pay your taxes, then all of the Jews following him, who hated this tax because it locked so many of the Jews in poverty, will look at Jesus and say, he is a pretender, he doesn't have our best interests at, my, at heart at all. So if Jesus says, pay your taxes, he will lose his public support. If he says, don't pay your taxes, Rome will arrest him for treason. The Pharisees are sure they've got it made. This taxation issue is going to nail the coffin of Jesus once and for all. But of course, Jesus realizes what they're doing. And he asks them to pull out a coin. The coin from Rome that was used to pay the tax called the census. Whose image is on it? Caesar's. Well, if Caesar's image is on the coin, then give the coin to Caesar. And I really wish there had been a recording at this point because I imagine Jesus saying, give the coin to Caesar because Caesar's image is on it. I imagine some silence while he enjoys the thought of the Pharisees thinking, we got him. He's just told everybody they have to pay the tax. And then after that silence, after seeing the Pharisees kind of winking and nodding at each other, and maybe elbowing each other and going like, yeah, this is good, Jesus says, and give God what is God. The image of Caesar on the coin says the coin belongs to Caesar. The image of God? What's that have to do with anything? Well, as good Jews, they would remember the beginning of Genesis, where God creates humans, and the story tells us God made humans in God's image. And so what Jesus is saying is you are made in God's image, so you belong to God. So, again, the story has nothing to do with whether or not followers of Jesus should or shouldn't pay taxes. What the story is saying is, are you living true to the image you're made in? Anybody can put their image on a coin. God has put God's image on us. And are we living in a way that shows anybody who's paying attention and reminds us that the only question for followers of God is are we living in the way God wishes for us to live? The only question that matters, are we living in the way God wishes for us to live? Because if we are not, then we are not living faithfully to the image we are made in. Christian writer Shane Claiborne says that in his rural area of Tennessee, People used to say, you are the spitting image of your Aunt Clara, or you are the spitting image of your Uncle Jesse. And he said they would argue about what spitting image meant, but what that conveyed was not just that you may or may not look like your Aunt Clara or your Uncle Jesse, but there's something about how you are, there's something about your character, or your personality, or how you gesture. There's something about you that reminds them of this person. And he said that, I argue about where does that phrase come from, spitting image? 
And they said most of them agreed that it meant spirit and image of. You are the spirit and image of your Aunt Clara. You are the spirit and the image of your Uncle Jesse. And what Shane Claiborne then asks is, for followers of Jesus, shouldn't people be able to look at how we live, how we are in the world, and say, you are the spitting image of Jesus. That might sound kind of arrogant or presumptuous, but I would bet that if each of us takes a moment, we can think of at least one person we have come across who we've looked at and said, you are Christ-like. You live the Jesus life. Which is another way of saying you're the spitting image of Jesus. And so, in that temple controversy about taxes, which really wasn't about taxes, Jesus is saying, you are made in the image of God. Each of us is made in the image of God. So, are we living anything like the spit and image of God? Are we living a life that says to people, God is the one I follow. God is the one I live for. And since for Christians, Jesus shows us most clearly what a God-like life looks like, then I hear Jesus saying, give to God the things that are God, saying to us, Follow close to me, Jesus said. Stay close to me. Stay so close that you start to live in the spit and image of me. When people look at your life, where might they see signs of whose image you're made in and who you follow? In the year 137, a Christian named Aristides did a pretty risky thing. Christians were still being persecuted at this time in the Roman Empire. And yet he wrote a letter to, of all people, the emperor of Rome, Emperor Hadrian, to introduce him to Christians that he wasn't very aware of how Christians lived. And this is what he said. The Christians, O Emperor, do not keep for themselves the goods entrusted to them. They show love to their neighbors. They do not do to another what they would not wish to have done to themselves. They speak gently to those who oppress them, and in this way they make them their friends. It has become their passion to do good to their enemies. They live in the awareness of their smallness. Every one of them who has anything gives ungrudgingly to the one who has nothing. If they see a traveling stranger, they bring him under their roof. They rejoice over him as over a real brother. For they do not call one another brothers after the flesh, but they know they are brothers in the spirit and in God. If they hear that one of them is imprisoned or oppressed for the sake of Christ, they take care of all his needs. If possible, they set him free. If anyone among them is poor or comes into want while they themselves have nothing to spare, they fast for two or three days for him. In this way, they can supply any poor man with the food he needs. This, O oh Emperor, is the rule of life of the Christians. 
This is their manner of life. This is how Christians seek to be the spitting image of Jesus. As you reflect on the financial commitment you wish to make to Redeemer in 2021, what is a way you have experienced here people living and acting in ways where they know they are made in God's image and so are living true to that image? And as you think about how this neighborhood experiences Redeemer, what is one way this neighborhood looks at Redeemer and says, they are living like Jesus? They are making real the Jesus way of life. These ministries depend on financial commitments from this community. And I would love it if as you turned in your financial commitment card, if you might include a little note that said, this is a ministry I would love to see Redeemer create. This is a new thing I would love to see Redeemer do that would show more fully to people in this building and people in this neighborhood that we are serious about living in the spit and image of Jesus. For you to dream of a ministry that this neighborhood needs that could really free us up to be more daring and more creative as followers of Jesus. If there's something you've always thought, wow, wouldn't it be great if we could dot, dot, dot. Include that with the pledge card that you get into the office by a week from today, Reformation Sunday. And let us dream with you Knowing that new ministries require additional funding, so as you make your financial commitment to this community, think about if there's something you'd really like us to do to maybe add just a little bit to that commitment so we might dream boldly and live into that call that Jesus gave to that community in the temple. Give to God the things that are God. You are made in God's image. So make God real. Nancy McGargle has a word to share with us about why she makes a financial commitment to this community. Violent thunderstorm hit. A really violent 
thunderstorm. As the storm became louder and the rain heavier, strange things, strange things started happening in the basement. <laughs> strange things that VBS volunteers don't ever want to see happening in their fellowship hall. Water was rushing out of the electrical outlets, <laughs> gushing to the point that in no time there was two or more inches of water on the floor. Luckily, Redeemer members are nothing if not resourceful. John Dispro traded garden tools for push brooms. Dave Lippert and his son Keith, innocently visiting from Northern Ireland, were also pushing water out of the emergency exit with great vigor. It was an incredible sight. Sue braved the storm and went home to retrieve industrial fans to help dry out the floor. In no time, most of the water was cleared out of Fellowship Hall. That was the amazingly dramatic part of my stewardship story. But the most important part comes next. The multiple reasons for the flood were determined and the necessary improvements and repairs were made. Professional gutters and drains, a company you may not know, played a large part in the resolution of the flood, as did Margie Frazier and Church Council, Bernice Stewart, and the Property Committee. And of course, the resolution of this shocking and dangerous problem cost bags of money. My story serves as a reminder that the well-being of the church depends on things seen and unseen. I want, to, I want to thank Bob Gray, who suggested that we look into Genesis in our Tuesday Bible class. Clearly, the flood story has stayed with me. <laughs>
confess our faith in the triune God as expressed in these historic words. I believe in the God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And today in our prayers, we will be lifting up Linda Williams and her family over the death of Don Williams this past week. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, the human family, and all of God's creation. Spirit of hopefulness, it can be so discouraging to listen to the news and hear all the stories of unrest, political polarization, angry people, discrimination, natural disasters, and disease. We feel hopeless, as if it's never been as bad as it is right now. Then we are reminded of stories throughout history, even back in biblical times, of unrest, people trying to trap Jesus in conversation, persecution and mob uprising. Strengthen our resolve to live in Jesus' spitting image, to listen respectfully to others, to understand the fears of others, to stand up for justice, and to remain hopeful with you is our beacon of light in dark times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, we give you thanks for faith communities who gather people together, even if virtually, to hear your word of love, hope, and salvation. Bless the ministries of churches throughout the world who work faithfully to share God's love with all. Today, we lift up the people of Grace Lutheran Church and Redeemer Lutheran Church. Empower them to share a message of grace and hope as they work to meet the needs of their community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, God, for the beauty of this world around us. The colorful leaves and dazzling sunshine lift our spirits. Watching the seasons change provide a newness to our days and awaken us to the awesomeness of your creation. Inspire us to be good stewards of this earth. And as we move through each day admiring your creation, spark our senses to feel you appreciate you, and enjoy the mystery of you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting parent, many of us are struggling with illness, pain, loneliness, anxiety, and sorrow. We feel fragile and need your healing embrace. We especially lift up Linda Williams and her family those struggling with the coronavirus, victims of recent flooding and fire, the exhausted fire workers, healthcare workers, teachers, and leaders, and all those whom we now lift up, either silently or aloud. Draw all we have named into your circle of love and healing. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Guiding Lord, in today's Old Testament lesson, we were comforted by your words, I know you well, and you are special to me. I know you by name. Help us to hold these words close in our hearts, remembering that just as you guided Moses, you will be with each of us as we venture out into a new week. 
You know that Mother Odin is by name. Renee, Ansel, Lily, Jasper, Serenity, and Oliver. They are very special to you. Help them to feel your presence in their busy lives. Shower them with patience, strength, and resilience to face each day. Refresh all of our spirits to be the best we can be, to trust in your love and guidance, and to embrace opportunities to care for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we place all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The two times when we've been able to gather for in-person worship outside, it has been really good to see some of the youngest people from this church family. And uh, I just realized how much I miss your stories and your energy and hearing about how life is for you, what you're doing. And because right now we can't be together very much or very often, I would invite you to do one thing that I think everybody in this church family would love, you who are the youngest ones in this church family. If you are creating a piece of art for school or just for fun because you're kind of bored, if you write a story for school, if you go do something and have a picture, I know that Miles had for his birthday yesterday people driving around their neighborhood with signs and stuff. And Miles, if you or your mom have some photographs from that, send pictures of things you're doing or things you're making. Send copies of stories you're writing or something you're doing for fun, a song you're singing or learning. Send copies of any of that into the church office, and we will, if it's okay with you, send it out to everybody else so all of us can feel like we're with you because we miss being with you. So please, um, please do that this week if you can. Send that into the church office, and we'll send that out on, on one of the things we send out on Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, know that we love you and that we miss you and we know that you're not able to do a lot of what you really would love to do and you're not able to do things in the ways that you would really like to be doing them so um, we want to circle you with that love and hear and see what you're doing
Holy God, holy imaginative God, you set your tree of life in the center of creation, enlivening the barrenness, breathing spirit into the dust. You created wholeness. Holy God, holy compassionate God, you saw our brokenness and planted once again in the center the tree of life, the cross from which Jesus rose to save and heal us. Heal us. You reclaim wholeness. Holy Christ, holy healing Christ, on the night in which you were betrayed, you took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to your disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, you took the cup, you gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Each time you drink this, do so to remember me. Holy, generous God, we remember Christ's life and death, his resurrection and ascension, which renew the face of the earth. Shape us together on this earth, in the soil and rivers, in the sunshine and wind, in animal and human faces. Send your spirit on this meal and on us that we may share your bounty with the whole creation. Help us cry out with one voice for recreation as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of our rulers, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you.
Let us return our thanks. Generous and faithful God, you have fed us at your table. May the nourishment we have received enable us to enrich the lives of others wherever we may go from here. Whether the future be dark or bright, the road be smooth or rough, whether our cares be light or heavy, our song be strong or weak, keep our hearts warm and our hands open, our lives ever embracing and ever embraced by your love. today and all the days ahead.